the Lord be with you, and I welcome you, uh, not for the last time, but drawing to a close time into my study. And it is the last time that today we uh, sing the Rhapsody from our Psalmody. And in just a couple of weeks, we will start our deep dive into the joy of the Lord with Philippians. No, my technological skill has not gotten any better since last week. I'm still holding up a piece of paper. But uh, know that on the 6th of December, we're going to begin a new adult study, and that is a verse-by-verse, in-depth look at Paul's powerful epistle of joy. That's Philippians. Today, however, we're going to finish our look at the Psalms. So I hope you've got your Bible in front of you, and I hope you turn to Psalm 146. There are five Psalms left. We will have looked at, I just was counting this morning, about 70 of the 150 Psalms during the course of our study since June. And, uh, and these five, these last five Psalms are going to come at us uh, rather quickly. As a matter of fact, one more time, Cue music as time machine, and I invite you to get into your brain the sounds of the 1812 overture. If I had the tech, I would have that playing right now. But for now, you're going to have to just be satisfied with me doing da 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 boom da 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 da. Okay, that's enough of that. But where are you on the 4th of July? 4th of July, maybe sitting on a blanket on grounds somewhere watching a fireworks display. What always happens at the end? Well, in my family, we call it the grand final grand finale. And it invariably seems and invariably is that at the end of a fireworks display, they just set off everything they simply possibly can. And there are explosions all over the place and the lights and the joy and the power and the celebration comes to its incredible climax as it draws to a close. Well, that to me is what the last five Psalms do. What is your hymn equivalent to um, the 1812 Overture? What is a vibrant, loud, powerful song of praise uh, <clears throat> from your hymnal? Is it holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, or maybe a mighty fortress is our God, or, or one, uh, another kind of song of just powerful praise? So keep that kind of playing uh, in the soundtrack of your mind as we listen to these psalms of praise. Every single one of these five starts with the phrase, praise the Lord, ends with the, pr the phrase, praise the Lord. So today, Psalm 146, listen as we hear, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. To me, key verses of this psalm are that first couple, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. And then again, the psalm ends, The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. 
praise the Lord. So that is just in our uh, final grand finale of looking at the Psalms of praise. That starts us off. Psalm 147 is next. And uh, the, the writer is going to remind us that it's good to give praise to the Lord. So here we go. I think key verses are verses 1 through 11, so, so pay special attention to those. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He makes peace in your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He hurls down his crystals of ice like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and rules to Israel. He has not dealt with us. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his rules. Praise the Lord. So a common theme in, uh, in each of these psalms of praise is that um, the, the, the Lord continues to guide, the con Lord continues to bless, the Lord continues to provide. It's His power. I love um, verse 4. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Constellations have names and stars have names, but it wasn't scientists or stargazers of an ancient past that named them. God did. Read the book of Job. And it talks about Orion and the Pleiades. So it's an amazing thing, this power of God that is brought to bear right into the lives of those who love Him, who trust Him, who are blessed by Him. Praise the Lord? No wonder. Because of who He is and what He does for us in Christ. Psalm 148 comes next. <clears throat> And to me, the focus of this psalm is how everything, everything gets into the act of praising God. There have been other psalms, and we've referenced that before in weeks past. The seas roar, the, the, the rivers clap their hands, the forests shout. And so hear this psalm of praise as, as just that, that the God who created them gives them the ability to praise the Lord the way they do. Uh, and, and it's a neat reframe for you and for me to think about in the night sky, looking up and those stars shining. That's the way that God created them to give back, to reflect back their praise to Him for who He is and what He does. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created, and He established them forever. 
and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind, fulfilling His word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for His people, praise for all His saints, for the people of Israel who are near to Him. Praise the Lord. So this powerful cacophony of sound of praise from nature, from people, from everything and everyone, and, and again, the great reminder, not because of how good I've got it, although we've got it good, we have reason to praise, but that's not first and foremost why God deserves our praise. He deserves our praise because He's God, because He loves us, because He sent Jesus to be our Redeemer. He deserves our praise, our lives of response, because it's in His grace to give us Himself, His blessing, His love. As we uh, proceed through the next couple of weeks, the scripture readings that are going to come our way are going to remind us of that. Why do we do what we do? Because of who God is, because of what God does, and how we live our lives, lives of praise, lives of worship, lives of service, lives of devotion, is first and foremost because of who God is and because of all that He does. Psalm 148 just reminds everything in all creation, get busy praising the Lord because He is worthy of it, because He deserves it. And when we, again, see around us the hills, the mountains, the rain, the snow, the stars in the heaven all doing their thing, of praising the God who created them, I think these songs encourage me to praise the Lord more. When everything around me and all of creation is doing that which God created it to do, we are encouraged to do what God has created and recreated us to do in Christ, and that's give Him praise. Oh, it's Peter, um, 1 Peter chapter 2. Look this up later on, verses 9 and 10. And, and it talks about that we were, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people created in Christ to declare the excellencies of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. So why are we here? To declare God's praise, to point to Him, to invite others to know this God of love and grace. Praise the Lord. All right, Psalm 149. We are almost through the psalmody. Here is Psalm 149. The last two get shorter, but the last two get louder in praise. Psalm 149 reads, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, 
to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Let them praise his name with dancing, make, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Lyre is kind of a stringed instrument, kind of a little harpy kind of thing, like you see uh, on your screen uh, with our, with our uh, title slide for today. Um, a tambourine, if, if you want to pause this and get up and do some dancing, uh, you go right ahead. But, but once again, the stars are doing it, the forests are doing it, the seas are doing it, and, and when we are filled with this love, this gratitude, this faith in, and our, our uh, dependence on this God of grace and God of glory, our lives show it in all kinds of ways. Obviously, there is some armor taking here. There is some battle kind of uh, sound going on in this um, last part of Psalm 149. And once again, I'm going to bring Patrick Reardon in to uh, read, to interpret, and to point us to Christ even in the midst of this, uh, in the finishing of this psalm. So Reardon says this, let me remind you, this is verses 4 and following. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people, He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory, let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance and punishment, to bind kings and uh, to execute on them ju the judgment written. Reardon says this, To pray this psalm properly, we must be numbered among those warriors that it thus portrays. The saints exult in glory, they will rejoice in their quarters. The exaltations of God are in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands. The latter blade so described is, of course, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 6. It is part of the whole armor of God, which the Apostle Paul tells us to put on so that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, to be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. This double-edged sword of God's Word will be of scant use to us if we are not further girded and more amply fortified. Thus, to guard the affections of our hearts, let us wear the breastpiece of righteousness. To, proclect, to protect the reflections of our minds, lest they be distracted, we don the helmet of salvation. To be defended against the fiery shafts of satanic assault, lest we fall victim to their deceptions, we bear the shield of faith. And since our psalm summons us forth, to wreak vengeance upon the nations and reprove among the peoples, to pass judgment on the, the judgment decreed, we shoe our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So once again, a reminder, and this kind of, again, kind of battle sounding these words uh, can remind us that we're in a spiritual battle here. Yes, everything gives praise to God, but the brokenness of humanity the devil, the unbelieving world, our own sinful nature, remind us all too quickly, all too soon, and sometimes all too closely that we live in a, sol a fallen world and that we are still sinful. So we take our stand against those who oppose our faith, who are trying to destroy our faith. And it's God's Word as our sword and the rest of the armor of God that empowers us to stand and empowers us to praise the Lord. Once again, everything gets in the act, everyone is encouraged every way we possibly can to praise the Lord. This mighty Psalter songbook of, of uh, the Psalms these 150 psalms, 
just over half of which we've looked at, and the ups and downs and the emotions and the dark times and the celebrations and the, and the sorrows and the frustrations and the repentance and the declaration of forgiveness, all of it culminates. This is an incredibly fitting final song to sing as we close our consideration, our meditation on the psalmody. Thirteen times the word praise is coming at us in just six verses. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a way to end. And what a way to continue to be encouraged to do that which we do, again, first and foremost, because of His excellent greatness. And the, the psalm singer, writer says, let everything be brought to bear. Let everything be involved in praising God. Now, I uh, do not have news for you that we're going to get a band up in front of the altar and get some cymbals and guitars. And, oh, let's throw in a few dancers on Sunday morning, too. Take a breath and walk off that ledge of, uh-oh, how is our worship service going to change? However, be encouraged to think for you. How can you use everything at your fingertips, everything that God has given you, everything that you are, all that you have in praising God. Again, not just because of circumstance or surrounding or situation, which can come and go, but because of who God is, because of His excellent greatness. That's why we praise. And that's why He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we continue to do. Be strengthened today through the Word of God to continue to do just that. Praise the Lord with all that you are and all that you have. We close with a blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us all. God's blessings till we're together again.